Hello everyone, it is me. I am back with another video and today I'm in my cozy wizard robe. It's time to do some art. I have been working on this sketchbook since July last year and enough is enough. I want it finished. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to sit down, we're going to get cozy. I've literally just got one blank page and then just a bunch of like random blank spaces. So there's not a whole lot left, but there's enough that I don't feel like it's finished yet. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna start off easy by coloring this page that I started a while ago and just never got around to finishing. To be honest, I've been a little bit art blocked recently, so the whole like sketching process and coming up with ideas just hasn't been working. So I think starting with some color, that's a good way to warm up. This one has literally been sitting half finished in my sketchbook for like two months, so it feels good to be finally finishing it. I've honestly been struggling with art block or burnout or something, I don't know, ever since I started that short course I did. And even though I finished that course like two or three weeks ago now, I still am having a really hard time getting back into drawing and it's really frustrating. So I was happy that this drawing actually went well. I was actually pretty happy with the finished product and I felt like I was making some progress. I was also watching Lord of the Rings while I was drawing this and it took like two movies for me to color this in because I just kept getting locked into the movie. And try not to go feral when I say this, but I am 24 years old and this was my first time ever watching Lord of the Rings and my excuse is that as a kid I was told that it would probably be too scary for me and watching it now it 100% would have given me nightmares as a child, so I'm glad I wasn't allowed to watch it as a kid. Then in like my teen years, I was more into like horror movies and 80s action movies, so it just wasn't on my radar. And now that I'm into Dungeons and Dragons, I was like, yeah, I think it's about time that I watch Lord of the Rings. I've put it off for far too long, and I freaking love it. I, at the time of filming this, I've only seen the first two. I plan on watching the third one tonight, so maybe you'll hear more about it in like a voiceover later in this video, who knows, but the first two, I love them so freaking much. Somehow I went in completely blind, even though it's an iconic movie and everyone knows like the general gist of what happens, I went in knowing absolutely nothing. I have avoided spoilers for the past 23 years and I thought I would struggle with how long the movies are because obviously they're all three hours long But I actually really liked the pacing I checked the time thinking that I was only like 40 minutes in and I was already like an hour and 20 and I was like Oh my god, where did that go? So perfectly paced doesn't feel slow, but still gives you that sense that they are taking a very long journey also, Gimli is my favorite. I am Gimli. I am five foot tall and Gimli is like everything to me. I love him so much. I 100% judged a book by its cover. Like I thought that there was going to be a few characters that I really wouldn't like in this. Like I thought Gandalf was going to be super serious and that Gimli was going to be like all grumpy and hard to get along with and Aragorn was gonna be like, oh, I'm so mysterious, don't talk to me. But I love every single one of these characters. Gandalf is so goofy and whimsical and I love him so much. And Gimli and Legolas are best friends or lovers, I don't know. Frodo and Samwise, you, you cannot convince me that they are not lovers, okay? I knew that people shipped Frodo and Samwise and I just thought it was one of those things where like everyone ships them but then when you watch the source material it's like not really a thing. But by the end of the second movie I was fully like, they should have kissed. They are in love with each other, okay? This isn't even a ship, this is a real thing. And Aragorn, he was mysterious for like the first five seconds and then he was super chill after that, so we love him. I'm looking forward to the third movie because I have friends who are like heavily into Lord of the Rings and they said he's good in the third movie. His face is on the poster, so he must be doing pretty all right. All in all, first two movies, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm going to watch the third one while I do some more drawing and I'm sure I'll check back in. New Zealand's just next door, so I'm officially going to save up and book my tickets to Hobbiton. May as well. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I think I want to do a bit more coloring, so I'm going to work on this page here. It was my birthday recently, and my friend got me the best present ever. I will go get it. I will insert a picture of the cake because I was already blown away when I saw them walking up the driveway with it. So I was already like, wow, that is the best birthday present ever. And they were like, no, no, here's your actual birthday present. And they got me a little action figure of King from Tekken. Because we always play Tekken 3 and King is my go-to. And he's got a little tail. So he can sit on my desk while I color this. Which, I drew this before I got the action figure, but I love him so much. Then I want to work on this little sketch of Gleeby. You're probably wondering, who's Gleeby? Gleeby is my Minecraft character. My friends recently got me into playing Minecraft, which is another thing that like came out when I was a kid and I just never played it until I was 24. I've fallen in love. I've fallen in love. I've got my little character and I have built tunnel networks across our entire server and I've only been playing for like 30 hours all up. Let me know in the comments if you want a house tour of my Minecraft house because I really want to make that into a video because I've spent so many hours on that house already but I'm also scared that like no one will care and no one will watch it. But I might just post it anyway, who knows. Alrighty, I'm gonna put on Lord of the Rings 3 Am I gonna do some more art? Sorry, that was a bit dramatic. Uh, let's move on to the next drawing. So, I finished Lord of the Rings, and I could just about guarantee it was gonna be a sad ending, but I was not prepared. For the entire last half an hour, I was just like, oh, so that was the sad bit. Time for the happy bit and then another sad bit would happen. And that just went on and on until the movie finished and I cried the entire time. And that's saying a lot because I'm not a crier. Lord of the Rings, Return of the King proved that my tear ducts are still functional. And other than that, the movie as a whole was really good. I enjoyed it the whole way through. And then I immediately bought all three theatrical releases on DVD. And then my mum found the extended cuts on DVD at the op shop. So I now have the extended cuts to watch and I'm very excited. But I need a hot minute to just process the theatrical versions. I'm starting to understand why Lord of the Rings is an iconic movie. Duh! <laughs> it's really good. And now I just want to watch all the behind the scenes. I'm like 20 years too late, but at least I got there. So I had to draw Sam and Frodo. Don't ask me what style this is. I just did some weird cartoony, I don't even know what, but I like how these turned out. And then I drew a little Gandalf last minute because he's got to be my favorite character. I loved him in the third movie. He's like, oh, so you're not going to lead your army? Screw you, I'll lead it for you. And I relate to Gimli on a spiritual level. I love how him and Legolas are like, they're lovers, let's face it. But I love how they're like bantering back and forth. Gimli can't see over the wall. And then there's that bit where Legolas is like, oh, it's 
it's a pretty big jump. And Gimli's like, don't tell anyone, just throw me. <laughs> and he just gets tossed into the battle. <laughs> and then there's that bit, everyone's like walking in to see Frodo. And Frodo's like, Sam, Gandalf. And then Legolas walks in and he's just like, <laughs> and I love that for him. <laughs> he's been on a journey with him for like a year and he's just like, you. <laughs> so all in all, great set of movies. Would watch again. Like I said, I was a little bit freaked out by the fact that they all go for like three hours, but at this point, I want more. I'm itching to watch those extended cuts because the world building, the characters, everything. I love it. I love it. So this drawing was a little bit of a weird one. As you can see, it's on this like orange background that's super shiny. And the reason for that is it is actually Mod Podge mixed with food coloring. <laughs> it was part of some other like craft project that I was doing at the time and I had a bunch left over. So I just painted it over this page in this sketchbook, a page in my new sketchbook and a couple of pages in like a random one that I had lying around. And this is when I realized that you literally can't draw on top of this. The plan was that I wanted to draw over the top of this with like a dark orange pencil because I have one that would have looked really good up against this background color. But being Mod Podge, I forgot that it's like shiny and plasticky and you can't really like use anything on top of it. So it was a struggle to just find mediums that worked, which is why I ended up with paint marker for the sketch layer, ballpoint pen for the outline, and then some random combination of whatever for the rest of it. And I just ended up drawing Butch. I was going to do something like super creative, but because I was so limited by my art supplies, I was like, you know what? I'll just draw what I know. I'll draw my character Butch facing front on, looking to the side, <laughs> because that, my friends, is groundbreaking. <laughs> Not my most inventive piece yet, but I do like the way it came out in the end. It's a little bit wonky in places, doesn't quite look like him, but I think I did pretty well with what I had. I am slightly frustrated with myself though, because I do this every single time I draw Butch. So I was watching Rolly on YouTube, he does like the piercing fails, and I was like, oh yeah, my character Butch, he has a bunch of piercings. I should draw him front on so that I can experiment with like what jewelry he wears because I saw a picture of a person who had like star jewelry in their bridge piercing and that looked really cool. I was like, yes, here's the opportunity to experiment because Butch has a lot of piercings. And then I drew the exact same piercing jewelry that he wears every single other time I draw him. I did not change a single thing. And I was like, wait, how did I forget when that was the entire point of me drawing this picture of him facing front on? And like, it shouldn't frustrate me, but I shit you not, this has happened like five times now. Every single time without fail, I just get so like locked in on getting his facial features right that I forget that the whole point was to experiment with his freaking jewelry. <laughs> Maybe next time, boys. Maybe next time. I feel like I should give him more piercings because like Butcher's job is professional piercer. So that's like the biggest excuse to just draw as many piercings as humanly possible on his face. And I just don't think he has enough right now. I don't know. I did draw him once with a rhino piercing. That looked pretty cool, but I could only really draw it from side on. It looked kind of weird when I tried drawing it front on. So I may have to revisit that one. And it's a bit difficult with the beard in the way. I don't know. He could have... Oh my god. I just... Oh my... I just realized. <laughs> I forgot again. Another reason that I wanted to draw this is that I wanted to experiment with giving him cheek piercings. I don't know about you, but I don't see any cheek piercings in this drawing that we're watching right now. Am I... Okay. I swear, I have the memory of an elephant every other day of the week, but the day that I drew this drawing, I was working on like one brain cell. It's a miracle that the drawing even got done. Ugh.
Anyway, somehow I pulled it together and I got a little bit inventive. This could have ruined it, but I thought I'm gonna put some paint marker on his face and then I'm gonna blend it out with like a water brush and just hope that it doesn't ruin the entire thing. And it kind of looks like the water brush isn't doing anything at the moment, but by the end it did sort of start to blend it out and soften those edges and I'm really happy with this technique. It could have gone either way. I think it actually helped that I had that plasticky surface underneath so that I could just sort of smear it around. And since I used so much paint marker, I was then able to go over the top of that with my nice red pencil just to give it that extra bit of shading now that it actually had something to grip onto. So I just went through and did that, not trying to be particularly neat. And then when I got sick of doing that, I whipped out a water-based off-brand Tombow marker. I don't know what the brand is, but it was just an old red marker that happened to work over the top of this and just deepen up that contrast a little bit, bring the whole thing together. And being that it was a brush, I just squiggled it on. And now I have to think of what I'm going to draw on the other cursed orange pages that I created in my other sketchbooks because I was like, no, 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 you don't want to waste paint. Mod Podge and food coloring can't go to waste. And now I have like five pages filled with this strange orange goo that you can't really draw on. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Wish me luck. Finally, we have made it to the last blank page in the sketchbook. At first, I wasn't sure what I wanted to draw on this page, but I think I'm going to redo some art that I've been meaning to redraw for like a year at this point. This drawing is from like way back in 2017, maybe 2018. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I've always liked the concept and I think it deserves a glow up. So let's get to sketching. Close your eyes for a second.
And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. And keep your eyes peeled because a finished sketchbook can only mean one thing. Sketchbook tour coming soon. So with that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.